at Momentum, we know that success breeds success. So we are proud to help build the momentum of every woman's journey to success. We call it Momentum. Because the momentum you generate is formidable. And when we join forces, our momentum is unstoppable. Momentum, here for every woman's journey to success. Hello to all our listeners and welcome to She Owns Her Success. We are in week two and what an incredible range of conversations coming from week one. We're continuing the conversation with women who are breaking barriers, shattering stereotypes and redefining what it means to be a woman today. My name is Nozi Poshabalala and what an absolute privilege for me to be a part of this series of conversations with women sharing their own stories of success. And through their stories, we're getting insights as to how they have shattered barriers, how they have redefined the meaning of what it means to be a woman over generations. And so do join us as we tap into some incredible stories from a diverse group of women whose success is as diverse as they are. And Khutata, I'm going to start off with you. And people look at you and say, first black woman in the Standard Bank Forex Academy, when they say, this is a black woman who has been part of a team that is bagging awards in the market. And people say, Khutato is successful. What does that mean to you? How does that make you feel? Um, for me, I think for the longest of time, you don't necessarily see yourself as being um, successful in that mm-hmm. sense, because I think as women, we tend to shy away from um, our achievements and really owning them. Um, So for me, it's always been um, having to come out of your shell um, slowly and accepting the compliments because I think um, it takes us longer to, um, you know, accept the compliments and the achievements that we've gone through. Um, But I mean, it's been a tough journey for myself (laughs) and every small milestone um, is, is, is a huge thing for me. So sure. it's about um, getting over your fears, um, slowly gaining your confidence and um, always serving others. Um, that's how you grow for me. So always making sure that you focus on the goal. I love that incredible analogy of a journey um, and this idea that you don't just wake up and have an achievement and say, I am successful, but you're so conscious of this idea that I'm achieving along the way. I'm bagging milestones and successes. And also what I'm hearing you say is there isn't almost like an ultimate destination where you're going to say, I have completely uh, achieved success because you're constantly going to be pursuing success in different ways. So it's an incredible analogy that you've kicked us off with. I heard, uh, uh, Fran, you, I heard you almost uh, saying yes uh, through your voice as Khutato was speaking. What does success mean to you? I mean, there's so many South Africans. I wouldn't, uh, I would even say Africans and people around the world who look at your life story and they say, if there is one woman who is the definition of success and they call out your name, how does that make you feel? And what does it mean to you when people say you're successful? Well, as we said, I think when you in the in the momentum, you don't realize it as such. But now that you get to a point in your life like me, I've realized that I've been successful and I want to spread that success to all other women. Mm. I want them to see that by emulating what I've done, they can be successful. I face tremendous odds along the way, but I refuse to give up and got where I wanted to get. And that's what I want to encourage all women to do is to never give up and to believe that you can be successful because you can. Sure. So the reason that we're here is to share our stories because the belief is that when you share your stories of success, you normalize it for other women to feel that they can talk about their success and to pursue success. And what I'm hearing from your story is that you're saying, I've come to a point where I'm realizing it's actually not about even my own individual success anymore, but how my life can be an enabler for other women to begin their own journey of success. And that's incredible. So Tato, let me come to you. There you are in a space, again, where we don't really see women as leaders in that particular space. Um, When we think about agriculture and you think about women, one of the earliest pictures that comes to mind is you know, women in the fields, you know, um, we're not seeing women uh, running, uh, we're not thinking of women as running businesses in this particular space. And then we see you. 
And then we realized that actually there is a new definition of success in agriculture that we probably haven't had. What does that mean to you when we talk about you as successful? Well, growing up, I never had an image of what a female farmer is. I've always seen the farmer's wife or the daughter of the farmer, <laughs> you know, and it's never the woman in the forefront. And when I started to analyze that, I see the women are doing the books, they're doing the HR, they're really running the business, yeah. but they're not in the forefront because of the system that we're in. The title of land might be in the husband's hands. Yeah. So we haven't had that space where we have that ownership element, you know. And for me, that's what I see in, in how my story has unfolded, is to say, let's step into the commercial spaces. Let's show women that we've really been in this space. Yeah. In Africa, about 60% of farmers are women. These are women who are growing vegetables, fruits, coffee for their own families, yeah. and they're supporting their families on agriculture. So now we just need to elevate it to the other level and see how can we corporatize this? How can we make it seem as a good industry for women to choose and go into? How can we start breaking down barriers so we can seem that we can do it, you know? Yeah. And I think that um, when people, when I interact with people and they ask me questions, it's the most basic questions. How did I, how did you do it? Like, yeah. how did you even think yes. and get there? Yeah. And it was just me basically having the imagination, waking up and running for it and not thinking about the challenges that are in the industry as obstacles that I can't go over. Mm -hmm. It really made me think I need to be imaginative. I need to be, need to think, I need to be knowledgeable. I need to equip myself to be able to go into the arena and be, you know, have the right tools to be able to face this industry. And I think that's what's important, the education, the passion, that's how, that is what drives you to success. Sure, you've said so much uh, in that incredible response. I'm gonna just lift uh, one or two things. What I'm hearing you saying is that when we share our stories of success, we give other women the manual. Yes. Because yeah, essentially, you know, we begin to say, this is how I did it. Yes. Uh, this is how I actually started. This is how I built this business. Um, and then the other thing that just resonates so strongly is that, you know, this idea of erasure, you know, we, we forget the role of the woman in building empires. Mm -hmm. We forget that, the, you know, the person who's actually doing the HR, the finances, yes. the admin is actually the backbone of the business. Yeah. And we, we celebrate just the person who's standing in front of us. And so what I'm hearing you say with that is that let's be mindful that there are probably very, very many successful women, but they're still in the shadows. And conversations like this give them the legitimacy to step out of the shadow. And so actually, hold on, I'm actually the one who's built this business with you. And so it's my success as much as it's your success. So Sanisha, I want to come to you again. I mean, um, the title of economist isn't one that just anybody picks up uh, off the floor. And when we are watching, uh, you know, as a financial journalist myself, when we're looking at, when we're picking up the phone to call an economist, we don't always find Sanisha's. And there are moments when we find people like you. And again, this idea of Sanisha is a, the definition of success. How does it make you feel? What does it mean for you, if anything? Well, I think, you know, it's all part of being able to be uncomfortable in a space yeah. that is predominantly male dominated and being okay with being uncomfortable and learning along the way. So I think as women, as females, we need to be open to learning and continuous learning and striving to always do better in our industry and paving that way for others to follow. And I think that's really where it all stems from because no one likes to be in an uncomfortable space. It's yeah. not a natural mm -hmm. setting for us. Uh, but that's really where growth comes from, I sure. believe. You remind me of uh, the author um, uh, Holiday. I've forgotten his first, Ryan Holiday. Uh, he's written a book called The Struggle is the Way. And basically, it's exactly that idea that if you don't struggle, you actually don't build new neural pathways that actually lead to more success. So an incredible way um, that you're actually bringing in this idea of success. But I would imagine, ladies, that over time, the definition of success has changed for women. There was a time when success was getting married. Uh, <laughs> there was a time when success was something else. How have you seen it over the years changing, Fran, um, this idea of what constitutes a successful woman? I agree with you. It was getting married, having a family, cooking, whatever. 
But I've tried to change that mindset that women can be successful in other fields and still fulfill those roles, but yet become professionals and successful. And I think for me, a a great example is um, on television in the Premier Soccer League, we now have a number of women who are commentators uh, and good commentators because Mm. as a woman, you always have to be better and you always get tested. I've learned that Mm. in my time. You always get the trick question. And I think the women who are now in this arena are very successful, very determined, confident because they know they can do it and they've channeled all their energies into being a successful brand. Sure. I mean, that's an incredible insight, right? So you've literally seen the entry of women into spaces that women were otherwise just absent from, right? Structurally or, or even just unconsciously. And suddenly we look at that and we go, oh... I I can not only do that, but I can be really good at it and become successful. Tato, that you're in an interesting space as well where the definition of success must have been evolving. What are your thoughts on how it's changed over time and what it means for you as a young woman compared to maybe other women who were in the agricultural field generations before you? Well, I think success has been very different across the generations. I mean, for my grandmother, it was success for her was just being able to get a job in the urban space. For my mom, it was being able to run a business, you know. For me, I had to take it to another level to say, how do I now create spaces for other women in this industry? And I think that has been the very, the toughest thing that I've had is to open up what I have, my farm, to other women. Mm. And I do this by, you know, bringing interns and being biased to say I only want female interns because when a farmer wants to bring interns on their farm, they're probably thinking about boys. They're strong, they have minds. You know, Mm. I bring in the smart girls, the ones that can organize, you know, the ones that that are technically sound. Mm. And that has grown my business. And now I'm seeing that, you know, the next step or the evolving step is to say, now as women who are successful, how do we create spaces where other women can come in Mm. how can we break the system to say you know we have issues such as equal pay we have issues such as unpaid labor you know we still have social responsibilities but how can we create businesses that accommodate women Mm. and their lifestyle so that we can be flexible and dynamic to achieve yes our personal goals be it marriage or children but also be successful and comfortable you know because I mean there are people that we've had to be uncomfortable to get to this level now we need to say how do we start making it comfortable for the next generation now to excel and be greater. Mm. I, I, I love this generational thread that's almost coming through naturally. I want to come back to equal pay a bit later because I know you must be <laughs> very, very passionate about, uh, about that topic. And the fact that in 2020, this is a conversation we still must have is problematic. But what I'm hearing you saying is when women are successful, they then have the legitimacy to question the script. Because what you, by bringing in other women, you're saying, no, 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 when we think farmer, when we think player in agriculture, I'm going to start breaking the script about the narrative that then follows just by the way I run my own business. I want to bring a different question to you, Hutatso and Sanisha. And it's a question of, and I want to build on this generational theme here, the idea that there must have been women whose stories inspired you, whose success Um, inspired you and most importantly who by sharing their success through their stories have enabled you to be here today. So there's a smile playing on your face (laughs) so I'm I'm, I'm thinking there's a there's a woman for sure that you're thinking about. Um, So I followed Puti Mahanyele for the longest of time um, since I was in varsity, I mean, her journey from her Shanduka days uh, to Sigma, uh, Sigma yeah. um, and now as NASPA CEO. Um, and I had the opportunity to actually attend a conference, um, a female conference, like, you know, um, we're having today. And there she was covering her life story in full. And I guess the one thing that really stuck out with her was... Um, always serving other people, you know. Um, you got to be involved. Um, by serving others, you actually grow. Mm-hmm. And um, 
that's where you also get to gain people's trust and loyalty as well. Yeah. So for me, um, she has always been that one person where it's about being focused on where you're going and doing the work. Don't get too focused on the titles and wanting to be in the forefront. So generally, as I am, I'm not a loud person, but I'm one person who makes sure that our team mm. needs to produce the best work that we need to produce. So it's a team effort. It's never you alone. Your success is contributed. Um, other people have contributed mm. to that's it. So, so for me, that's the one thing that has always got me um, So I'm going to be difficult. I'm going to be difficult. So firstly, love Putti. I think it's an incredible example and inspiration uh, that you've shared with us. And a little bit later in the conversation, I want to come to this idea of women and humility. And how, and because as I'm hearing you talking about, oh, it's a team effort, it's not just about me, it's about everybody else. What do men sound like in that moment? Yo, hey, it's just, you know, it's all about me and yeah, everybody else are kind of like behind me. So we'll talk about it because okay. I think it is an incredible insight that you've lifted for us to say, what is the difference between the way women engage with what they own as theirs? that this is mine, I did this, versus how men then engage with, with success in that. So remind me if I forget, yes. I do want to go to Sanisha. Which woman has inspired you by telling her story of success? I think it would be a miss for me to choose one individual yeah. female. Um, especially as time has gone on and in our industry, there are more and more female examples out there who have continued to break barriers, who set really awesome examples for young females out there. And I think all of them need to be celebrated because each of those women have contributed to a piece of the puzzle that we now sit with and looks more complete than what it was a couple of decades ago. Um, I, I wanted to touch on your point around the humility because, you know, we often find, and especially in the economic space, the pendulum often swings too far to one side, you know, to the other side. And when we come from a background that's very male dominated, it could be very easy for us to go into a space that becomes too female dominated. Mm. And I think it is quite important to achieve a balance because we're not there to put males down in any position. We are there to build a better future and a better society for all. And I think that needs to be a bit of a collaborative effort. And as females, because we do bring something different to the party, we do bring an element of diversity. I think that we can actually achieve that without swinging the pendulum too far to the female side once again. Sure. So you're saying it's great. Let's have our stories and let's share our successes. But let's be mindful of the conditions, the organizational cultures that we're creating, that we don't go non-diverse as well in the in by going to the other end of the pendulum. And so what I want to lift also from what you've said is that, you know, the, the issue of women and women feeling empowered in organizations, women getting equal pay, women being represented in difficult in, in, in industries that are male dominated is not a woman's issue. It's a humanity issue. Mm -hmm. And I think I love the point that you make about it's a collaborative effort. Because once we all wrap our heads around this idea that we want to create a diverse world with equal opportunity and equal representation for everyone, the world begins to look more and more uh, like the way we want it. And I think your point is valid. I mean, you guys would know the conversation about the boy child now being left behind because all the focus is on the girl child. A conversation for another day. Now, in, in our, one of our earlier podcasts, I almost got smacked because I didn't ask everyone who their inspirational woman um, is. So I'm not going to risk that. I'm going to come to you, uh, Tato, and I say, who's inspired you? Whose story um, has inspired you? I think there is many women that have played um, towards my success. I think it's women that I've interacted with, with in different environments and different spaces that have been able to take me on the side and say, you on the right path, um, you are doing well. So getting that reassurance is great. And also women that have been able to share opportunities. I think mm. that's what's made me even more successful. Um, I have a, my professor from um, university, Dr. Tlamingwenya, she was the one who, you know, obviously saw my passion and said, you need to get yourself out there and share the opportunities. And, you know, 
and seeing also my mom, you know, yeah. mm. seeing her, she had a, a business. When we were young, she had a business. She had a, like a proper hair salon in Bank City in Joburg. And I could compare that with my other friends and their mothers. It wasn't like that, you know, and I could see she could run a business. She could run a family. And for me, that was normal, yeah. you know. And then when I started entering the space, it's when I realized that it's still, people are still not confident to take that leap, you know. So we need that support, that support structure. And even in the industry that I'm in that's male dominated, I've actually had to get support and inspiration from men that actually want to help women. So now we're starting to break that open to yes. say that, yes, as women, we need to be inspired by women, but we also need men to open up those spaces for us and yeah. share their own experiences. So we also don't make the same mistakes or, mm -hmm. you know, fumble along the way. We need to, you know, shorten that gap, you yeah. know. So there's been very much uh, inspiration from home, from external. I mean, there's amazing women that we can look up to and uh, it would be a shame to name one, yeah. but there's yeah. so many. Yeah. So I love this idea of assurance. I mean, I, I choose to call it affirmation. So somebody who just says, hey, you're, you're doing good um, and opportunities. And I think the one thing I'd add to that uh, that I found extremely helpful is women who also just give you constructive feedback when you're going down the wrong path. Yeah. Um, and sort of help you sort of redirect to your own success and to do it with kindness yeah. um, as yeah. well. Because that's the, if the intention is kindness, then the feedback, um, even if it's negative feedback, is just the, it's a blessing, it's a gift. Yeah. Now, we're talking here, Fran, about women who've inspired us. I would imagine that in your life, there weren't too many women um, running or working with FIFA. There weren't too many women um, <laughs> playing, <laughs> coaching, doing all of these. Yeah. So where did your inspiration come from? Uh, where did you draw inspiration for success? And look, who did you look at and be like, okay, um, there's a pathway, I can do this as well? Well, certainly it was my mother, I think, for, in her generation. She played sport, she played tennis, she, she was amused, she played the piano, she played wow. keyboards, she did everything. And, and it made me think, well, if she can do that, I can do it. She was a good example to me, a good role model. And that's why in my life I tried everything. I was a musician, I played in a African jazz, which, I mean, was most peculiar. I played in the <laughs> Saudi woman of jazz. We represented Africa in London. Wow. Um, we played for Madiba twice. What more can you ask for that? Sure. Wow. And I was with Panyana. We also, Madiba met her. So my mother was certainly my inspiration. But then also in the male side, a, a man like Nelson Mandela that could be so forgiving, so with such vision. And as you said earlier, we need to be able to criticize, but also to um, path the way or make yes. a way for people to be successful. And that's what I've tried to do is to, is to make girls, women believe in themselves that they can do it. Um, and and learn from what I've done under very difficult circumstances. Sure. I want to let on to do, because that's where we're going now. We, I want to shift the conversation from our um, definitions around success and where we've been inspired to action and the extent to which we're, we're seeing women taking up space yeah. decisively. Yeah. Um, and, and, and maybe let me come to you, this, uh, this, this idea of taking up space. I mean, it's, it's become more than a buzzword. You know, it's become more than just a phrase from Miss Universe. And it's almost become a call to action, yes. uh, if you will, a rallying call amongst women. Where are you seeing women taking up space around you? And how are they doing it um, and owning their own success in the process? Um, I like that question, Nozi. Um, in the trading environment, um, essentially there are very few women in there. You hardly find women um, on trading floors. At Standard Bank, I mean, it was predominantly men and you could only see a few women. Um, and when I came to the buy side from the sell side, um, same issue, yeah. thinking that I'm switching sides, but then I came to realize that it's the same thing again. But what's really important and what stuck out with me in terms of occupying spaces, when you see those women and how they carry themselves, the one that have broken, yeah. you know, barriers in the area that you're in, the likes of Sanisha, the likes of Zisanda Gila, our chief investment officer, Sonia Sonderson, 
um, when you look at them and how they carry themselves and the challenges and the open policy that they have, yeah. get out of your chair and your comfort zone. Go and ask them, how did you get here? Mm. Um, start getting involved. Be inclusive. Um, don't wait for people to come to you. Um, you're the one looking for mm. help as well. Sure. So um, for me, occupying spaces is you never know who's watching you. So always carry yourself in a certain light and always make sure that there's that open door that when somebody needs your help, you're yeah. able to lead them. So we part of um, Take a Girl to School. Yes. Um, so that has been a big initiative for us. It's a pity with COVID. Um, yeah. We can't really interact as much, but one of the things was that we were going to bring them to the office so that yes. they can have an idea of what we do. So for me, occupying spaces is a huge thing because it's it's action. It's something that you mm. see. Mm. It's something how you carry yourself. So yeah. I yeah. love the points you're making about how we're carrying ourselves. And I'm going to I'm going to come to that because I think the the how you occupy the space matters. Um, you know, people often talk about we get a seat at the table. But are you filling your seat or are you just sitting at the table as an observer? Right. And Tato, when occupy space or take up space ignited, if you will, in South Africa, and in the world, did you get a sense that now we're really going to see even more momentum around, you know, shining the spotlight on women and women's issues? Was there any notable shift for you in what you were seeing around you? So I think um, the rhetoric at a, on a political space is to bring up women, have equal representation. But when we go to the ground, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. And when you look at policies, they, they highlight the issues, but they don't have ways on how to address them. So I think we need more women coming up in the ranks to contribute to um, spaces of management, boards, you know. Yeah. Um, we need to contribute to, you know, even just writing papers, you know, s disseminating information, you know, being on social media, sharing that information, because that's when we start having the, the people start thinking and the clock starts winding, you know, yeah. and people start to s see that if we don't, you know, bring up women, then th there is a social and economic issue. Yeah. As we are in 2020, women, most, it's mostly women who are responsible for the household. And I was reading a study the other day that was saying that, um, um, that about 98% of a woman's salary goes to a household and a man spends about 60%. And that's such a difference to say that we should be looking at our social fabric to say, how do we start changing it to allow yeah. more women to infiltrate the space so we can be raising a much better a new generation that's yeah. coming up that's more supportive that's more solid you know so we need to think about it from that economic point of view but also we need to say what are these policies really really saying you know is the funding really trickling down how are land uh, policies are working are we having conversations with traditional leaders to understand why do we need to open up land and ownership rights to women yeah. it's not that we want to take over but women need places to be productive yeah. they need the space to be yeah. productive you mean they need houses to house their children. So it's, it's a social need. Mm. And I think that as a society, we are missing the point. There's very loud voices, feminist voices, that, um, that men think that it's, you know, anti-men, yeah. very uh, anti-patriarchal society. And, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's very, it could, it can run off negative, you know. Yeah. And I think what we need is positive viewpoints to say we need to actually tell them what is the trade-off point to say the reason why we want equal rights equal pay or yeah. an environment where we can be productive is an economic issue yeah. mm -hmm. we need to be active in the economic space you yeah. know and I think that's what we need to understand why we need to change that and why we need to look at policies and actually internalize right. them um, in the rural space for me it's humbled me working in the rural environment because for me, I grew up in the city and then going into the rural space where I see women very dependent on social grants to say that, okay, fine, I've got three kids, that's 900 rands. It's sure. the economics, you understand? Yeah. Yeah. And you see that, you know what, we actually need to start getting girls and women more independent to feel like I just need to be independent. Whatever life I choose, if I decide yeah. marriage or not, or yeah. a family, I need that independence. And that's where I think the shift is going to change. So I'm going to test something quickly. I'm going to test with, the, with you, Sanisha, because what I'm hearing um, Tato say is a successful woman leads to a successful community 
leads to a successful country, mm. leads to a successful continent. Because what I'm hearing is saying women just by their the virtue of their mindsets and how they think around money and economics is always about building. It's always about sustainable, long-term, beyond just myself. How does that statement sound? Does it sound about right? It does ring true. And I think it also boils down to creating the opportunity. So, you know, as Tato was saying, you have to get a space at the table initially to yeah. be able to showcase what you are able to do and how you can share this with other people and how you can create success amongst your society. So I think that initially needs to start at that point. Someone needs to give you a space to voice your opinion. And I think over the last couple of decades, women have had far more opportunities to educate themselves, yeah. to learn about being financially included in a society and just having knowledge around how they can contribute better to society. Yeah. So what happens, friend, when nobody's giving you the space and you've got to, you've got to create the space yourself when nobody is saying, you know, um, actually, we need more women here? Because I would imagine that that's part of your experience where you've just had to go in and completely create the opportunity so that others can see that it's possible. How yes, do we, should we should we wait for spaces to be created? No, I think often we have to we have to create our own spaces and force our way in. I mean, if if I think of myself when I started coaching, there were no women coaches; they were all men, and they were now big guys in coaching. <laughs> and when I came along, I could see them thinking, "What does she want to <laughs> be at home cooking?" And I said, "No, I want to be a coach." And I pushed my my agenda, and I proved myself that I was worthy to be there. I could, I pushed myself, I trained hard, I was good, I worked on my technique, and I got approval. Yeah. And that's what we need for women is to, is to humble themselves, as you said, but not be pushovers. Yeah. To humble themselves, but still find a way, and women are very good at that, of getting what they want yeah. in the end. Yeah. yeah. Somehow. Even if it's the long way around. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're back to the point of humility. So let's have this conversation quickly. I mean, I think it's given that men aren't very, or oh, women are more humble than men in many respects. Do you think that our humility holds us back sometimes and stops us, and uh, to you, Kutato, from just um, owning some of our own successes? And so we almost sometimes create the conditions for our contributions to be written out of the script because we are so busy being humble yeah. to a fault. True. Um, it's so true. Like, on a personal level, that's the journey that I had to go through and still am trying to improve on. So most of the time, I'm always so focused on getting the job done. Let's look good as a team. Um, you can't take the compliments um, because you're like, but we did it together or you're just, you don't want to be in the forefront. So for me, sometimes being humble sets you back in a way because you're not pulling yourself out, like, you know, um, pulling your, pushing yourself further or placing yourself in uncomfortable spaces for you to grow. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do that, um, you'll forever be stuck in the background. So at times it's just uh, finding ways, like she yeah. said, you know, women are great at um, finding ways to, to push the doors and knock the doors open. And for me, I found that by being authentic, just being yeah. yourself. Mm. Once you know your truth and who mm. you are, um, it's so much easier for you to present what you want and with clarity as well. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been an incredible conversation. She owns her success. Amazing stories, amazing learnings, and amazing insights. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Nozipu Shabalala.